the college meeting of the Zion City Council to order. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Here. Commissioner McDowell? Here. Commissioner McKinney? Here. Commissioner Dettine? Here. Mayor Hill? Here. <coughs> Pastor? Mayors, Commissioners, I want you to know that we pray for you at First Baptist and uh, honored to be here tonight to lift you up. So let's, uh, let's pray right now. Father, as we come to you this night, Lord, we lift up to you a series of words that are important to us. Perseverance, respect, responsibility, integrity, safety, and kindness. These are more than simply statements and a character list. They make government work. So Lord, we ask, would you endow us with these character traits? They are not inborn to the human experience. We look in the world around us and we recognize that this is abnormal to the, to the human nature. And so we need another word. To inspire us on to do these and that is the gospel throughout this village father would you help us to sense your grace and the good news you give to us in Jesus Christ so that at the very least we can treat one another with a similar type of grace and respect may we show love deference and honor to one another, considering the other viewpoint and opening up our heart to what is possible. In the same way that you did for us in Jesus Christ. So it is in his powerful name we pray this. Amen. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Item number four is agenda changes. Do any of the commissioners have any agenda changes? Any department in? Is there a motion to accept the agenda as presented? So moved. A motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dettine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item number five is the consent agenda. Citizen comments. Or excuse me, citizen comments. Um, uh, Mr. Al White? Uh, good evening, Mayor and uh, City Council members. Uh, I'm here this evening because of uh, the city's uh, violations, uh, property violations. And uh, I have some pictures here if, you, if I can bring them up to present them to you. It's not a lot that many. Uh, I'd like to present these to you if you don't mind. Sure. Violations are for trash on the streets, uh, unlawful uh, place to uh, garbage or trash in alleys or streets, uh, wind blown refuge, disposal of bucket uh, bucky trash, and then also uh, driveway. And the driveway was I don't even consider the driveway. Uh, the tenant that lives there is some space uh, behind the garage, uh, north of the uh, garage, and it's about a, uh, I think about 14 by 9 feet. And uh, the tenant wants somewhere to, to park his truck. So I told him if he cleared out the space, he could, he could park it, part of my backyard. And so he put out some gravel and uh, just enough space for him to park the truck. 
And so now I am, I'm told to uh, remove the gravel. Uh, I can put down crushed gravel, which I could, that's no problem. Uh, asphalt and some of that costs too much for that little, for that particular space. And uh, so I want to see if I can uh, leave what I have down there. It's not even visible uh, to the streets. It's behind my garage, so when you're coming down 33rd, it's not even visible to the streets. In fact, when you turn up in the alley, it's, it's right off the corner of the alley, and it's not visible because you turn right up and you shoot right on back. So, and then it's a part of my backyard. It's not a, a driveway because it's not leading to my garage or, or leading to my house. And so the space is, uh, is more of just a, a parking space. And so I want to see if I can get around some of these issues because I don't know if he's mistaken uh, my property for someone else's property, which I see that's kind of hard to do. And uh, in one of the pictures I show of, uh, of a neighbor right down the street, you know, there's trash that's on the street there. And so uh, my property, I'm, I'm a member, of, in fact, I'm the minister of the Church of Christ on 20, uh, 2218 Hebron in Zion. Been a minister there for quite a while. And uh, I've been a member of Zion for quite a while. So, you know, law abandoned citizens, and I, have, I pick up my trash, number one, on, on, on the streets. That's where I live on Matthew Place. Uh, you know, it's, you won't find any trash on the streets over there. And so I'm in a custom, if I see trash on, on my streets, or in front of my property, or in somebody else's property, I pick it up and I dispose of it. Okay, Commissioner? Yeah. So, you want to comment? What, what, what's the address? Uh, the address is uh, 2244 uh, 2246 uh, Elijah. Okay. Zion. Have you talked with uh, anyone in our in the housing department? Uh, talk with one of the inspectors. Uh, yeah. I have. Do you know which uh, which which inspector? Uh, the inspector that does this, I know he's kind of kind of hard guy to talk to. Uh, Warren Ferret, I believe. Is his name okay? And uh, I know Bob Serrano is uh, you know he's uh, known him for quite a while. He's he's pretty nice, pretty nice fellow. Okay, I mean him get along pretty good, and, you know. But I don't like to just kind of go over everybody's head and try to take it to the top. Sure. Yeah. And so I was looking at these things on here. If you want to uh, also take a look at this inspection sheet. Yes, would would like to do that. Keep that, and then now is your contact information on there? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait, no, not, not right now. Okay. Yeah, this is my address. Number 12. Get, get in touch with you. Yeah, uh, Mr. White, I, I, would, I would ask that you, uh, uh, Commissioner McKinney is in charge of all uh, building and zoning matters, oh, yeah. and uh, uh, Director Ionson in the green yeah, shirt, he's in, yeah. responsible for the uh, building department, and uh, if you would meet with those two, and uh, hopefully we can get it all squared away. Okay, if we can set up a date where we're calling, or yeah. I can call you. Can yeah, I'll, I'll give you a call. If Rich and I will get together and talk, and then I'll reach out to you. One of us yeah, will reach out to you. Yeah, okay. I appreciate it, because I've been up in, like I said, I've been up in for quite a while, and, you know, getting stuff like that, and my, I consider my property to be pretty, pretty clean. I understand. Yeah. Right. I appreciate the fact that you came forward tonight. You know, if there's a complaint about something, we don't know unless somebody tells us, so I appreciate it. I'm sorry, one, one more thing. I sure. <laughs> okay. It is a uh, on Elijah. I think that's around, uh, should be around 30th Street. I mean, 29th or 30th. It is a, uh, a, a court, tennis court, and basketball court uh, in, on, on that street there. Right. That's, and it uh, has been vacant for years. And I think that, you know, the city, if we can uh, fix that up and fix up the tennis court, put some basketball rims up there. You know, get some of my youth off the streets. Well, that is and actually that that's actually Park District property. And, Park District property. Yes, okay. and they're responsible for that. But uh, that, that basket and those tennis courts were taken down years ago at the request of the neighbors. Really? Yeah, because of some of the behavior that was going on out there, and, and it was out of control. And unless we had a police officer there the entire time, it was okay. uh, that's why it came down. Okay. But uh, but that is Park District property. Park and if District they property. if they decide that they wanted to change something, that's up to them at this point. Okay. 
Okay, it's been quite a number of years, so. Yeah, okay, I'll check that out. a long time. Yeah, all right. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, that's comment. Thanks. Item number six is a consent agenda. Clerk, please read the consent agenda. Approval of minutes of a regular meeting held on August 15th, 2017 at 7.02 p.m. Approval but not release of closed session minutes of a meeting held on August 15th, 2017 at 7.51 p.m. Bills, vouchers 127148 through 127321 drawn on First Merit Bank, total $1,303,341.80. And the Buddy Poppy's proclamation. We have a proclamation here that I'll read. Um, it says, Whereas the annual distribution of Buddy Poppies by the veterans of foreign wars of the United States has been officially recognized and endorsed by governmental leaders since 1922. And whereas the VFW Buddy Poppies are assembled by disabled veterans. And the proceeds of this worthy fundraising campaign are used exclusively for the benefit of disabled and needy veterans and the widows and orphans of deceased veterans. And whereas the basic purpose of the annual distribution of Buddy Poppies by the veterans of foreign wars is eloquently reflected in, desire, in the desire to honor the dead by helping the living. Now, therefore, I, Mayor Al Hill, and the City Council of the City of Zion, do hereby urge the citizens of this community to recognize the merits of this cause by contributing generously to its support through your donations for Buddy Poppies on the days set aside. September 15th, 16th, 17th, 2017 for the distribution of these symbols of appreciation for the sacrifices of our honored dead. Be it further resolved that the city, Zion City Council urges all patriotic citizens to wear a Buddy Poppy as mute evidence of our gratitude to the men and women of this country who have risked their lives in defense of the freedoms which we continue to enjoy as American citizens. Mm -hmm. Dated this fifth day of September 9th, 2017 and assigned by the mayor and the city clerk. I'm up and and the consent agenda. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dettine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item number seven is considered passing resolution as follows. 7A is amending personnel authorization per Chief Lewis. Thank you, Your Honor. In anticipation of item 9B, um, last city council meeting we approved acceptance of the SAFER grant before we can hire. We have to increase our personnel authorization. So I'm requesting we increase the fire rescue personnel authorization from the current 16 firefighter paramedics to 19 firefighter paramedics. I'll make a motion that we amend the personnel authorization for firefighter paramedic from 16 to 19. And, is it, and I'm assuming that includes the change in the uh, grant funded grant fund. from zero to three. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Sorry. Is there further discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dettine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item eight is considered passing ordinances as follows. 8A, rezoning property in the City of Zion, 5621 Route 173. It's the second reading for Director Ionson. Thank you, Your Honor. Back at Z, 17Z5, uh, Planning Zoning Commission recommended approval. The first reading, the City Council approved uh, the rezoning. Is there a motion? I'll move to approve. Second. And we have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? 
Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dettine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item 8B is granting a special use permit for contractor storage yard for property located at 5621 Route 173, second reading for Director Ionson. Thank you, Your Honor. Document 17Z6, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission uh, recommended approval with conditions. The council recommended approval with an additional uh, condition that they install an eight foot privacy fence to block out the screening for the equipment uh, on the first reading. The motion. So moved. We have a motion. Second. <coughs> a second. Is there a discussion? Lord, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dettine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item 8C is granting a variance from Zion Municipal Code Section 102 202, parenthesis 4, permitted obstructions in yards, front yards for property at 3140 16th Street, second reading per Director Ionson. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, docket 17Z7, uh, Zoning Commission recommended approval, and the Council recommended approval on the first reading. Is there a motion? So moved. A motion? Second. And a second. Is there a discussion? I think everybody should just know that this is the second time we've looked at these items, so that's why they're approved so quickly. We've already approved them once, and this is the second time around. So I, I remember I was sitting out there once and thinking, what's happening? How can this be going so fast? This yeah. is actually, this is about a uh, generator uh, for Cancer Treatment Centers of America's uh, transportation facility on six, 16th Street. They want to put a generator outside in the front yard, and there really is no front yard, so uh, they've been given the variance. That's correct, isn't it? Right? I do remember. That is correct. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I should probably slow down a little bit. Um, we have a motion in a second? Yeah. Did we pass this already? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. We have a motion in a second. Is there further discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dettine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item 8D is regarding the disposition of surplus property regarding a 2004 Chevy Impala per Director Ionson. Thank you, Your Honor. I request the following, following vehicle be declared a surplus property and approved to be auctioned through Clinton Auto Auction. The City Maintenance Department has taken this vehicle out of service. It's a 2004 Chevy Impala. Silver, bid number 2G1WF52E4493087584. Is there a motion? A motion to, yes. I have a motion to approve. Second. And a second. Is there a discussion? Is this your vehicle? Yes. <laughs> it, was, it was time. I think it's time. It was well worn, believe me. <laughs> um, we have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dettine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. And uh, there is uh, also an ordinance regarding the disposition of surplus property, and so okay, that's we've got that taken care of. Um, item 8E is to lease certain property in the City of Zion for gamma radiation detection units per Clerk Burkemper. And uh, I guess I'm... Are you Clerk Burke Kemper or am I Clerk? I'm Clerk Burke Kemper today. Um, this is to the uh, Mayor and City Commissioners. On December 3rd, 2013, the City Council passed Ordinance 13063, authorizing execution of a lease between the City of Zion and the State of Illinois, acting through the Illinois Emergency Management Agency, for placement and operation of three gamma radiation detection units one at 3364 North Gabriel, one in the alley between Gideon and Gabriel Avenues, and one in the east-west alley between 20, 20th and 21st Street west of Ezra Avenue. The current lease has expired. IMEA is requesting renewal of the lease as is, just extending the lease expiration date to June 30th, 2021. I respectfully request that the Council favorably consider this lease renewal and pass an ordinance authorizing the ex execution of the lease as presented. I'll make that motion. We have a motion? Second. In a second. Is there a discussion? Do you yes. know why? <laughs> uh, yeah. I knew this one was going to bring up some questions. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, it's to detect radiation. I'm yes. assuming because we have a nuclear, we did have a nuclear generating facility. Um, why are those stations so far away from the facility? 
Uh, they have other uh, monitors that are very oh, close. Right. So, okay. Um, there are so just a, a second that, line of. Yeah. How long has this been here? John, do you know? The planter? <laughs> no, no, no. The, the detectives have been there almost Just since leave. day one. Okay. So yeah. they're put out there by the Illinois Emergency Management Agency. It's not part of the plant itself. Right. So they do real-time analysis. So every one of the, there are seven nuclear plants in the state. So they put them in a radius around the plant. Just to detect gamma radiation for, it's basically in the event that there's an accident or it's really just for <laughs> assessing environmental damage from gamma radiation or if there isn't. So they're, they're always out there. You've seen the big silver boxes sitting by the side of the road. You probably just never knew what they were. And they just sit there and collect data. Hopefully not much data. <laughs> no, the, uh, yeah, I said I Commissioner McDowell and I had the same question pretty much. We received phone calls from two newspapers when they saw the uh, item on the agenda today wondering if this had anything to do with the spent fuel rods. And it does not. It just has to do with the nu nuclear plant being there. So uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dettine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item 8G is establishing an administrative procedure to determine el el Excuse me. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, 8F. To lease certain property in the city of Zion regarding west 200 feet of the east-west alley north of and adjoining 3219 Bethel Boulevard per clerk per Kemper. And again on clerk per Kemper. The city has leased the west 200 feet of the alley running in the east-west direction north of and adjoining the property of 3219 Bethel Boulevard since 1992. The city council approved a lease agreement with new property owners John and Janet Spencer in October of 2015 with a one-year term and an annual fee of $100. So the lease was renewed on September 20th, 2016 and will expire on September 30th, 2017. I respectfully request that the council approve renewal of this alley lease with John and, with John and Janet Spencer for a period of October 1, 2017 through September 30th, 2018 with an annual fee of $100. Is there a motion? So moved. moved. I have a motion and a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dettine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item 8G, establishing an administrative procedure to determine eligibility for benefits under the Illinois Public Safety Benefits Act per Director Nabel. Thank you, Mayor Commissioners. Before you have an ordinance um, establishing an administrative procedure um, for the PSEBA Act, the Public Safety Benefits Act. And um, basically that act says that we are to continue providing benefits as, as currently provided for any uh, public safety employee who is either killed or catastrophically injured in the line of duty. This just establishes a public hearing so the city has a seat at the table to be able to put input um, into the process when determining eligibility for that act. Uh, in the past, I believe the pension board was always granting duty disability or, or benefits, and then we kind of piggyback on their ruling. However, this gives us the opportunity in a public hearing to, um, to basically interject uh, if there is any objections or just to concur with that ruling for, for benefits. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve this uh, ordinance for administrative procedure for determining eligibility for PSEBA. We have a second. motion in a second. Is there a discussion? Yeah, I have a couple of questions. So um, the appointment of a PSEBA claims administrator, um, we're suggesting that that be the city clerk. Um, would we also want to put the human, our what we hope to be a new human resource administrator to oversee this process, or is this I thought that's who it was. Well, it says that the city clerk is hereby appointed as the SEBA claims administrator. I think that's in the meantime, and uh, I'm reading uh, administrative composition appointment of the SEBA claims administrator. The human resources director is hereby appointed as the SEBA claims administrator. I must have a page two copy of it. Oh, okay, this is page two. 
It originally was yeah. clerk, and it was changed to human resources director. So, oh, to right. your point, it's RE. Okay. <laughs> it was a good point in RE address. Point. Yeah. <laughs> Way ahead of us. All right. Um, this just establishes the procedure for um, having a hearing, um, but it, it doesn't say anything about the, the qualifications for someone to apply for SEBA. At least I didn't read it here. Or is that something different? That That's something different. This something is different. just okay. setting this up is the just process. This is just to establish the a hearing, hearing process. process. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, I think anybody, I mean, anybody could apply. If they need to. There isn't, there isn't, I think you have to, at, at that point, then this group would. Well, there is criteria. And the, if I recall correctly, the criteria is a, a catastrophic injury. Right. And. I've always had this question, and I'm, I don't know if we have an answer for it here, but what does catastrophic mean exactly? Yeah, that's, that's yeah, I think that, that really is somewhat spelled out in the act. It's yeah, that's determined by the state right. act. Okay. But there has been gray area that's been determined in the past. And it's different interpretations. So, so yeah, I, I, would, I guess this, I'm, I'm, would a hear, hearing clarify that? Would that come into question if someone uh, applies for placebo benefits and there's a question is this really catastrophic would that come up in a hearing process it, yes okay yeah this I guess is that, just the, pro the procedure to determine whether or not that the applicant is eligible for those okay. benefits so that would all be flushed out during that process and, and without I don't mean to insult anybody I just, that's not what I'm saying yeah. here but I think it, like, your, your point is well taken I think the definition of what is catastrophic <laughs> would be most helpful because I guess I question uh, when a individual who may have been hurt in the line of duty working for the city as a first responder uh, gets placebo benefits and then they've got another job someplace else. I don't get it. Well, and that's what this is. Well, I know, set, but, but, we need, I, but his yeah. point is well taken. What is catastrophic? If catastrophic, to me, catastrophic is you can't work. So you get these benefits because you can't work, and I, I find it. Uh, well, we now have irritating. we have a process in place where that can be. We will, we would have input on a hearing, yeah. right? Well, it would seem like it would have to be determined. Catastrophic would be mental or, or physical or both. Right, and I think that's what we have to look to our legal counsel for. What's what is catastrophic? I think it's part of it too, not to linger it, but it's not so much what is the injury catastrophic. But what caused the injury? Right. So if I'm sitting here and I fall down and hit my head, and now I'm paralyzed for the rest of my life, was I working in the capacity of my job in an emergency, or did I fall out of the seat? Right. That's kind of where we start going with placebo benefits. Right. And you also have the issue of I'm collecting catastrophic benefits, and I mean they're quite generous. The catastrophic Correct. benefits. But I have the ability to go work for another department somewhere. It's like, wait a minute. I, I don't understand how it can be catastrophic and not catastrophic enough that you can work for somebody else. But that's above my pay grade right now. Yeah. All the more reason why we should implement a policy, policy so that right. we can, a yeah. procedure so that uh, does these this affect issues any can be addressed. Beneficiaries of PSEBA, or is this all uh, new uh, applicants? Going forward. forward. Going forward. The state has enacted some new procedures, though, in order to uh, keep up with the ones that are currently on the seat. And we've enacted those. Diane Burkett has enacted some of those procedures. Some of the questions you're asking, there are procedures that are in place to start uh, collecting data, just what the mayor's bringing up, whether or not they're working someplace else. Does that get to? If I we, we pay the third highest placebo benefits out of all the cities in the state of Illinois. 25,000 population Zion, Illinois, versus Rockford, Peoria, and, you know, Des Plaines and Naperville. And, uh, so I, I think we, I, this is well done. This is put together. Probably should have put something together a long time ago, but uh, um, thank you for putting in the effort to do it. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. 
Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dutin? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item 8H. It's an <coughs> ordinance authorizing and providing for the issue of, an, of not to exceed $3,700,000 taxable general obligation refunding bonds alternate revenue source series 2017 of the city for the purposes of refunding certain outstanding obligations of the city, setting forth certain details of said bonds, including the pledge of certain revenue to the payment of principal and interest on said bonds, and the levy of a direct annual tax sufficient to pay such principal and interest if the pledge revenues are insufficient to make such payments authorizing the deposit of said taxes directly into a designated escrow account and authorizing the execution of a tax escrow agreement in connection therewith and authorizing the execution of the bond purchase agreement with Fifth Third Security Chicago, Illinois in connection with the sale of said bonds per Director Nabel. You said it all. Yeah, that's, that's real. Um, now, would you like to explain it, what In I layman's terms, <laughs> yes. Basically, um, we've had the, the process going along for a while for, for the the potential issuance of these bonds. We had the, the, the initial authorization to go to market. We had the public hearing um, to take in public comment before now passing, or but having the first reading of the ordinance authorizing us to actually go issue these yeah. bonds. Um, September 19th, we'll have the, is it the 19th? September 19th, we'll have the second reading on this ordinance um, as required for the, for the Bond Notification Act. So. This is just, we have a balloon payment on an existing ser the series 2014 14 bonds for the purchase of the property at Green Bay 173. There's a balloon payment in the year 20, November 2019. We're looking to refinance those to extend that term out. Um, this basically says that we could levy a tax uh, on that as all general obligation bonds we can, but we're pledging replacement tax revenues um, as a revenue stream, as collateral on that bond, and as long as we have those funds, as those replacement taxes in escrow, to in sufficient amounts and sufficient time to pay the principal, we don't levy an additional tax for the, the principal and interest on this. But the, the bond investors like to have that in there to say, you know, if there isn't enough money in there, we'll still get our money. But we, that's not the intention, and that's not the case on any of our alternate revenue bonds. We always put the, the funds in escrow. And, and the alternate revenue source here to pay off these bonds? That's the uh, Illinois Personal Property Replacement Tax. So we have to have, I think, 350000 a year, which is like one and, one and a quarter times the actual principal payment amount. We have like 420000 So that's the pledged revenue source that they could intercept, basically, if we didn't make payments. Dave, that's through the, the local government distribution fund, or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that comes from the state. They basically collect the personal property replacement tax and distribute it to us. Is there a motion? I'll move to approve. A motion? Could you read the ordinance for us? <laughs> I don't think we have a time this evening, <laughs> but I would encourage everyone to take a look. And the property is for sale. <laughs> so if anybody wants to buy the property, it's for sale. Second. We do have somebody coming Thursday to look at the lights. Oh, so okay. we're trying to sell what we can to a minor league baseball team from Sheboygan. Um, it really is. <laughs> um, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah, second. We have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dutine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item 9A is considered zoning docket 17Z9 requesting a special use permit to operate a church as petitioned by Love and Grace Worship Center located at 2248 Sheridan Road, Suites 1 and 2 for Director Ionson. Planning and Zoning Commission recommends approval. And you have a special use permit uh, in front of you. And I believe there is an attached ordinance. There was a request to fast track this because uh, uh, the church needed a place as quickly as they could. So uh, your ordinance is included in this uh, along with the approval here um, rather than coming waiting another two weeks. Um, is there a motion? I'll 
make a motion to approve this request. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Is there a discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dettine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. That covers the ordinance. Okay. Item 9B is request permission to fill three firefighter paramedic vacancies and request the names of the next qualified candidates from the Board of Police and Fire Commission firefighter paramedic eligibility list per Chief Lewis. Thank you, Your Honor. Continuing through with the process, last meeting we approved the SAFER grant. Earlier in this meeting, we approved author or revision to the authorization personnel. Now I'm requesting council to uh, approved having the Fire and Police Commission contact the next three eligible candidates on the current eligibility list for firefighter paramedic. I'll make that motion. A motion. Second. And a second. Is there a discussion? Uh, for the public information, we've received a grant to hire three additional firemen for a period of three years. Um, with the money that we're getting from the government, from the federal government, I believe. Is it federal grant? Federal money. Yeah, FEMA. Uh, the money that we're getting from the federal government, plus what we will be saving in overtime, uh, what it's actually going to cost the city, or when, minus what we will be saving in overtime, it's actually going to cost the city $45,000 a year uh, to have all three additional firemen on for uh, three years. So uh, it's uh, over, what was it, $700,000, $800,000 worth of benefits that we're going to get for approximately 135000 So uh, it's a good grant, and congratulations, John and David and anybody that worked on uh, putting this together. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dettine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. <laughs> Item 9C is consider approval of intergovernmental agreement by and between the City of Zion Fire Rescue Department and the Beach Park Fire Protection District regarding equipment and personnel sharing per Chief Lewis. Thank you again, Your Honor. As we move forward in working with our functional consolidation with Beach Park, one area that we saw a need for clarification related to the sharing of equipment and personnel. Uh, this is basically something we've been doing for many years anyways between our neighboring departments. We've just never formalized it. So as a housekeeping measure, we developed a intergovernmental agreement for the equipment and personnel sharing. And it, right now it sits between ourselves and Beach Park, but there's a hope that we go ahead and get Wynth Barber, um, Newport, and possibly Pleasant, Pleasant Prairie involved in this as well. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve this intergovernmental agreement. And motion. Second. And a second. Is there a discussion? Yeah, I just have a, a couple questions. So the, the current agreement that we have for the Quad One North, does it also cover some of these same? No, the Quad One North is simply a response agreement for mutual aid. All right. This is, um, for starters, what we use it for now is if we have an engine that goes down, We'll take one of their engines and put it in our, put it in our station. Yeah. Right now we have nothing that says you can or you can't other than a handshake and a thank you at the end. This kind of clarifies a little bit. It says we can trade equipment back and forth, use it as needed, and be covered. If there were to be um, some kind of a, an accident that takes place with one of these vehicles uh, that we're borrowing, I, I, this agreement covers it. Mm -hmm. But. Apart from an agreement like this, what, what do the other departments do if there's an, an accident or something like that? You hope that they're good guys and they're going to pay for what they did? <laughs> so this might this may very well be of interest to the other departments then? Yeah, I mean, it's not the first time. I, I, I would say in the past we've had equipment that's got damage and, and we're on the hook for it. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for working on yeah. Good so stuff. Who's forward. on the hook for it? The borrowing the department, department, department or the lending department? The borrowing. If I have a Beach Park engine in my station and I accidentally drive it into something else, I don't deliver it back with the dent and say, oops, sorry, we got to fix it myself. Okay. And we have insurance, of course. And we have insurance for it, yeah. And, uh, and our insurance does apply to borrowed vehicles? I am so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, uh, now we're, we have an agreement. Yeah, now we have an agreement. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll okay. about to. Um, is there a motion? Do we have a motion? Mm -hmm. In a second? Mm -hmm. Okay. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dettine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. 
Um, item 9D, tabulation of bids. Fire engine per Chief Lewis. All right, last time, thank you, Your Honor. Our fiscal year 18 budget included funds in the amount of $572,658 to replace our reserve engine, which is a 1992 Pierce. Our new engine is slated to become a front lighting apparatus. Um, our truck, which is a 2002 Pierce, will move to Station 1 and be utilized for commercial and high-rise responses, as well as serving as the reserve. That's a million, million plus vehicle to replace. So the sooner we put it in reserve, the longer we can extend its lifetime. Uh, we put together a set of specs. We sent them out for bid. We had one response come back for our bid opening, and that was from Fire Service Inc. for an E1 rescue pumper. Came in with two options. The options were based on the number of inspection trips. Option number one was 479,684. Option number two was 467,485. Both of these options included a performance bond and a discount for 100% prepay. After a discussion with Director Nabel, it was decided the best option for the city based on financing was to decline the 100% prepaid discount and save on the performance bond, bringing the total cost for option two down to 465,623. I respectfully request council's approval to accept Fire Service Inc.'s bid in the amount of 465,623 for an E1 rescue pumper contingent on securing a financing by Director Nabel, which he should be bringing to the September 15th council meeting. Um, I'll make a motion that we uh Approve option two at four six five six two three. Um, pending proper financing from David Nagel. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? I've got a question in the in the the last sentence. Uh, uh, cut and paste. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tough. So we're not buying an ambulance yeah, either. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I don't remember that. that in the budget talks. That was a template. Oh, it's in the budget talks. Oh, it is, but yeah. it was okay. It was. Yeah. I saw that. I think I was going to bring that up. Too. Yeah. That's a template. I'm just trying to slip yeah. something in. There. No, not yet. Yeah, one hundred and sixty-two thousand dollars ambulance. That's, that's hard to slip in. Um, okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dettine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item 9E, consider amendment to sick leave policy per Clerk Burke Ember. On December 20th, 2016, the City Council adopted an amended sick leave policy pursuant to Public Act 099-0841 Employee Sick Leave Act, which took effect on January 1, 2017, which allows employees to use personal paid sick leave benefits provided by the City of Zion for absence due to illness, injury, or medical appointment of the employee's family on the same terms upon which the employee is able to use sick leave benefits for the employee's own illness or injury. Per the City's sick leave policy and bargaining unit contracts, all personnel except for fire rescue department personnel earn one sick day for each full month of employment or 12 sick days for each full year of employment or 96 hours per year. It has come to my attention that this policy needs clarification regarding the number of family member sick leave hours allowed per year for both union and non-union fire rescue department personnel. The current policy references sick leave accrual in use in days rather than hours, which has brought into question how the family member sick leave time for fire rescue personnel should be calculated. The fire rescue personnel bargaining unit contract states that the employee shall earn sick leave pay at the rate of 12 hours for each full month of continuous employment up to a total of 144 hours for a continuous work year. The employee handbook states that for non-union fire rescue shift personnel, employees shall earn sick leave pay at the rate of one half shift day for each full month of continuous employment up to a total of six shifts, 144 hours, for a continuous work year. Per Public Act 099-0841, an employee may limit, or an employer may limit the use of personnel sick leave benefits provided by the employee, employer for absences due to an illness, injury, or medical appointment of the employee's child, spouse, sibling, and parent to an amount not less than the personal sick leave that would be accrued during the six months at the employee at the employee's then current rate of entitlement. 
If fire rescue department personnel earn 144 hours per year, as opposed to all other personnel who earn 96 hours per year, then no less than six months of family member sick leave equals 72 hours, not the 48 hours, which represents no less than six months of family member sick leave for all other personnel. I respectfully request that the council amend the employee sick leave policy as presented. Uh, the explanation to all that is that most employees work uh, 2,080 hours a year, and there's a direct correlation between the 2,080 hours a year and the 12 sick days that they get. A uh, fireman generally works 2,876 hours a year. Uh, they work almost uh, oh, a quarter more than, put in a quarter more hours because they're 24 on, 48 off uh, than a regular employee. So in order to equalize the uh, sick leave benefits, we, are, we would raise the uh, um, amount that they can use for sick leave from uh, to 144 hours per year as opposed to the 96 hours per year um, and then no less than six months of family member sick leave because 72 hours and not the 48 hours. Have a motion that we amend the sick leave policy. We have a motion. A second. And a second. Is there further discussion? Questions? Clerk please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dutine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item 9F, consider appointment of FOIA, Freedom of Information Act Officer for Clerk Burkemper. Um, she took off on the, for a meeting where She's had more things before the council than any other meeting in all the time I've been here. But um, Pursuant to the Freedom of Information Act, a public body must designate one or more officials or employees to act as a FOIA officers. Currently, the city clerk and deputy city clerk serve as city hall FOIA officers. Deputy Chief Henderson serves as a police department FOIA officer. With my retirement approaching, I believe it would be prudent to appoint a FOIA officer to replace me as soon as possible. The city clerk would continue to be the fr first line FOIA officer with the alternative uh, stepping up in the city clerk's absence. I recommend that San Lito Bronson be appointed to as FOIA officer. If so designated by the city council, Ms. Bronson would be required to complete the FOIA, online FOIA officer training course within 30 day days after assuming the position. And uh, based on uh, Clerk Burke Kemper's recommendation, um, I would appoint San Leader Bronson to be the uh, se second FOIA officer here in City Hall. I'll move to approve this uh, appointment. Have a motion? Second. And a second. Is there a discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dutine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item 9G is considered appointment of the Fire Pension Board per uh, Mayor Hill. I'd like to appoint uh, Director Nabel to the uh, Fire Pension Board. Is there a motion? Approved. Motion and a second. Is there a discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dutine? Aye. Mayor Hill? Aye. Item 9H is discussion regarding possible change to GPT Enterprise Special Use Permit Ordinance 13061 per Commissioner McDowell. All right, thank you. Um, this is the uh, Dungeons of Doom operated by GPT enterprises. So what I'd like us to take a look at, um, you have a copy of the ordinance, so it's page four, and items number six, seven, and eight. Um, we have been placing uh, barricades on, uh, on 29th and 27th streets. And I live in the area, and I just noticed that those barricades are unattended and often um, sidestepped by motorists. So. They either move the barricades or just go around them. I, I see in the grass, you know, tire marks from people that have just gone around those barricades. Um, I think the reason that we, we were interested in barricading those roads and directing traffic um, down Shiloh Boulevard uh, as entry to the haunted house is excessive traffic in the area. And I just haven't noticed it to be a real issue. So um, I'd like to suggest that we um, not put the barricades up, at least give it a try this year, 
Uh, I, I talked to uh, Chief Dumian and uh, Chief Lewis about it. I haven't had a chance to talk to uh, Director Colangelo, but um, I mean, if it is an issue, we can put them back up. Now, the language here is, is my question. It says the barricades and other traffic directing devices shall be placed in such a manner and at such locations as may be determined necessary by the chief of police and the director of public works. So does that mean we have to put the barricades up or? No, it's within their discretion. It's at their discretion, yeah. all and right. Just, just for clarification, um, we can discuss this ordinance because it has been enacted, but we really can't change any of the language in this. The applicant went through the public hearing okay. and the council at the time, so the city doesn't have the authority to unilaterally make any changes to this. Okay. Um, but, I mean, we can you can discuss your points, but item six specifically says, as may be determined, necessary. Yeah. So at the time, um, not knowing how things were going to play out because this was a new use in that area, the uh, city retained the discretion through the chief of police and the director of public works to determine what, if anything, was necessary. Okay. So, so that still stays with the city. All right. For example, if the operator required or requested things, the ultimate authority is the discretion is with the uh, the department heads, the okay. chief and director Colangelo. Right. So that, that was a clarification. I didn't know if shall meant we have to, but it can be determined then. As may be determined yeah. necessary. Okay. Um, can you clarify the second part of that? It says notwithstanding the foregoing. 27th Street and 29th shall not be not, utilized. Not. So they are prohibited. You cannot use 27th and 29th as an entrance or exit route to and from the haunted house attraction. And I think the way that that can be addressed is in the literature that GPT Enterprises publishes. And on the signage that we have on, on the streets, it, it directs people to Shiloh Boulevard as the entrance. So we put the barricades in place to um, kind of enforce that. but. Apart from having someone stationed there, I don't think the enforcement really works. And that's why I'm suggesting we not put the barricades up. Is it people going to the haunted house or is it local traffic, people trying to get to their houses? I don't know. Yeah. I'm not really sure who. I'm, I'm, it, well, they're, they're actually at Edina and 29th and Edina and 27th. So yeah. the only people that would be, be going east are, would be primarily people going to the Times okay, so it's, yeah. it's past that point where the, the residences yeah. are in, into that area near the train tracks where the barricades It's are. right at Edina and okay. 27th and 29th. So yeah. anybody going to, that would live on Edina is already at their house. They can get to their house without going around or through the barricades. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying I don't think it's necessary. Um, I, but I guess if I it does. My question is: Is it a is it a problem? I mean, well, I, right now, I, I, I just I can tell you, I've got like a list of three, four, five, six people that I'm gonna get calls from uh, because the barricades aren't out there and there's no talking to them. There's no talking to them, and I'm just my my only question is if it's not hurting anything to have the barricades out there, and it seems to be working except for some people going around them. Um, I'm just, because aren't we, uh, I mean, it, it used to be that, it's my understanding, ESDA would put them out and pick them up. And now it's, uh, who puts them out? Dave, who puts them out? You guys put them out the first night, right? We dropped them the first night, the police department takes them out, and we have some ESDA members that currently work down there. They put them out, the police department picks them up at their leisure. When you say pick them up, you mean they pick them and move them to the side yeah, of the road? The of the right. So, it's not a big issue, but I just, you know, people are driving on the grass. And I'm getting phone calls about people driving on the grass. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to send other phone calls to you. You said they're driving on the grass once to me. I'll tell them to call, the, the, I'll tell them to call the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the other issue that I... Uh, I'd like to bring to our attention is the use of the electronics signboard, our uh, emergency signage, um, which is a big electronic sign. It's that orange one. 
Mm -hmm. um, now what I've noticed is that when you're driving down Sheridan Road and that, that sign is up, the message is so long that you only get part of it. And I, I also think it's an eyesore. Um, actually, the signage that they, they have, the, the black signs with the white letters, are much clearer. So I'd like to suggest we not use the electronic signboard on Sheridan Road, which is really kind of for a more emergency type direction. I don't think it really works very well. Um, I think the signage that they have, the black signs with the white letters, very clear, and just use that instead. It's my suggestion. And we do have the discretion about that sign. That's it. That's all I wanted to say. Any discussion, department heads? Uh, director of uh, ESDA? Uh, the black and white signs, which Commissioner McDowell is discussing, those are also owned by the city of Zion, those are ESDA in over there. If we were to do that, that would be fine, but we would need a budget to, a budget amendment because we would need many more signs to do that. No, it says we can, uh, the, the next point is that, uh, that they are allowed to put up directional signage um, and that we have made and they, they have to pay for, for it. Yeah, right. Currently, there are signs as well. Okay. You guys have any input? The only issues we've had over the years is getting personnel down there. So as they used to man every intersection, <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong, David, but they used to man every intersection in the intersection of 25th and Deborah, and then <coughs> they're out there from 6 o'clock till 2 in the morning. And then it got harder and harder to staff those nights. And then it got to, okay, we just put barricades. And then we had to put an extra barricade down now on Deborah. So it seems like the barricades are being driven a little bit by what helps Dungeon of Doom, a little bit by what helps the city with traffic. From an ESDA coordinator aspect, I just look at getting somebody down there to put the barricades in place. And then every year we lose a few barricades because they're laying on the side of the streets and suddenly somebody decides they need a barricade for home. <laughs> what they do with them, I don't know. But how many did we lose a year? That's another thing. I don't know what happens to us. They, they do disappear. And, and we, we did find out that some of the scrappers were coming through and grabbing our steel barricades and just taking them. Um, we, had other, we had signage ended up in the... the and so now that's a costly. we got to buy new barricades every year at a couple hundred dollars a piece probably. So just a couple things tied into that. So we're putting the barricades out and we're losing money on the barricades, buying new barricades and... Would we do this for somebody else? I'm not, well, the, these things, I mean, keep in mind, these things were all done no, in, I, I, in I, I, our insistence. Because we didn't, we didn't know what the, the traffic flow was going to be right. like. And actually, I, I agreed with this because we thought there would be a lot of traffic going in and out of the neighborhoods. And I do live in that vicinity, and I just don't notice it. I, I think the traffic flow is, is fine. It's not, a, it's not an issue that requires barricades, and the barricades are slightly unsightly, is my opinion. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to follow my sort of this, but it's, <laughs> I'm not either. I'm just, yes. I, know, I know, but I'm just thinking if we don't have a traffic problem and it has been working, why would we change it, perhaps find out that it's not going to work? And then I'll just tell them that, that they should call it. Fire chief and the planet's barricades. <laughs> I'm, only, I'm only kidding. I'll talk to him. Um, uh, so I, I don't know how do we proceed on. There, there's nothing. There was just, a okay. just a it's discussion. Okay, just a discussion. It's worded a possible yeah. change, but we, we can't change this ordinance. I think Commissioner McDowell just wanted. My to only my only concern was the shall barricade, and you've clarified that by saying that we can determine. If well, the it says, yeah, because it specifically yeah. says as determined by right, the chief. Then, then can I suggest that uh, uh, Commissioner McDowell and the police and fire chief and the director of ESDA uh, get together prior to to determine what you want to do and please keep an eye on the traffic flow? Just remember, my name's not in the ordinance. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, yeah, it is. it's in my ordinance. It's in my ordinance. I believe you're the coordinator of the ESDA. That's also not the ordinance. <laughs> it's in my ordinance. <laughs> if, you, if you would uh, do that and keep an eye on it, because I, I would hate to have a blow up. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, item 10 is departmental. 
Commentary. Yep. Department heads have anything they want to say? Um, item 11, our announcements. Thursdays through September 29th, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., Zion Farmers Market. Location change is one block east, Sheridan Road between Elam and Elizabeth Avenue. Uh, September 19th, 6.30 p.m. is Zion Township Board Meeting. 7 o'clock, there's a Zion City Council Meeting. And I do want to take a moment to just let everybody know that there is a Zion Area Job Fair uh, Wednesday, September 13th from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. It's at the Zion Leisure Center, and it is uh, sponsored by our State Senator Melinda Bush. Um, and there is a pre-job fair workshop, and that is September 6th, uh, 10 a.m. to 10.45 at the Job Center of Lake County on 1 North Genesee, and they will uh, go over learning to maximize the job fair and practice your introductory speech in this interactive workshop and um, work on your resume. So um, that will be available for anybody who is looking to participate in the job fair. Uh, Mayor, can yes, I sir. just add something? Um, yes. The Historical <coughs> Society and the Chamber of Commerce is sponsoring a walk through time, uh, which is uh, a dramatic portrayal of the history of Zion. Um, on September 10, starting at 2 p.m. at the Shiloh, uh, at Dowie's house, the Shiloh house, uh, you'll be uh, you'll be given a tour through the Dowie house, a guided tour, and then taken uh, to Mount Olivet Cemetery, where some historical figures from the founding of Zion will be um, there, coming back from the dead to. Uh, talk to you a little bit about the history of Zion. So it should be a unique event. John Alexander Dowie himself will be there. Uh, you see how that guy looks right there? And that, uh, we have a, a resident in our city that looks exactly like him. It's uncanny. And then on September 14th, uh, we have the Community of Character Walk, uh, sponsored by the Park District and the Zion Police Department. It's gonna start at the band shell walk down the boulevard to the police station, and they'll be on display some of the, the good things that are happening in the city. Uh, community organizations will have tables there um, about some of the services that are provided in the city. Um, it's really been a great event. It's be our fourth year we've done it. Thank you. And uh, I would also like to uh, congratulate uh, the Zion Chamber of Commerce and uh, Rich Walker for uh, putting together the uh, uh, Jubilee Days activities yesterday and over the weekend. Uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Commissioner McDowell and the Zion Ministerial Association for the, uh, their work on the prayer breakfast yesterday. It was a great presentation. Um, I'd like to thank the Zion Park District for all that they do for Jubilee Days. They're um, all involved in it. Um, and then I'd also like to congratulate, congratulate uh, all the uh, young uh, girls that uh, participated in the Zion Queen pageant and particularly the, uh, the winners and uh, just congratulate them and anybody who, uh, I know somebody probably feels bad that they didn't win, but it's, they say if you're in the ring fighting, it's, uh, uh, you've, got about 90% of the battle uh, over with, and I just want to congratulate uh, all of them that participated. So, um, we have item number 12 is a closed session. Uh, we have need for a closed session tonight pursuant to 5 ILCS 120 slash 2, open meetings for the discussion of collective bargaining. Is there a motion to go into executive se or so closed good. session? Do you have a motion? Second. And a second. Is there a discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Fisher? Aye. Commissioner McDowell? Aye. Commissioner McKinney? Aye. Commissioner Dedean? Aye. Aye. Aye.